Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the EBM Scholars. Today we are excited. We're excited because we have a very special guest uh, talking very important opportunities for others, but also uh, just the life in America in general uh, and the self-employment. Because most of the time as immigrant, when we talk, we usually focus more about looking for jobs. That is one of the big problem when we started talking about, oh, when you come here, how are you going to find a job? Minimum dollar job, you have to go Walmart, you have to go Amazon. So we talk too much about finding jobs as immigrant. But today our guest is going to talk about self-employment and what she's doing, teaching Swahili online. She has created her own academy to teach Swahili online. So for that particular opportunity, you can be able to learn what she's doing, uh, you can help her to get customers, but also at the same time, you can be also duplicate something similar for your own language. If you are Nigerian, you can find a way on how you can be able to teach Nigerian, Igbo, or whatever language you are using, uh, so you can be able to do that. We'll be having a lot of questions about uh, her uh, academy, but we'll have the specific questions about teaching in general and just in, uh, employment, self-employment, the benefits, challenges, but also we'll be talking about the immigrant life here in America. Welcome so much. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot. So the first thing will be, will you please introduce yourself uh, to the guests? There are so many people, uh, maybe somewhere here in America and all over the world, want to know what's your name and what do you do? Okay, my name is Rahima Majala. I am a native of Tanzania. I was born and raised there. I went to school for the most part, and I came to America. Of course, I get even more education here in this country. Um, and by professional, I am a teacher. I live in Houston, Texas. And uh, I teach, uh, my profession is teaching math in, in particular. Yeah, but you know, last year, around June, I started teaching Swahili during the COVID um, pandemic. So it was uh, kind of easier for me to start teaching Swahili using a Zoom platform. So for that matter, I was able to reach out to, to you know, majority of our students are kids, you know. So uh, I was able to reach out to kids from different parts of the world, especially in North America, like uh, America and Canada as well. So you are one among the people who have positively benefited from the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot complain. <laughs> I cannot complain for real. <laughs> yeah, when they give lemon, you make you lemonade. That's how it is. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> okay, so uh, can you tell us the name I just posted there? But for people who want to know about your academy. Okay, so um, my academy is called a Bari Academy. A Bari is a Swahili word. It's just like say like hello, like sometimes somebody is trying to find out how you're doing. So they say Habari, Habariako. So to me, it kind of you know gave me a hint that it will be a perfect fit for the purpose of the academy. So we just called it the Habari Academy. And uh, uh, as I say that we are doing online, you know, teaching. It's a it's a corporation registered in the state of Texas. And uh, you know, our customers, yeah, I mean, we are reaching out mostly via Facebook. Uh, you know, we used to get a lot through WhatsApp too, uh, and also, you know, online. And, and now we're trying to get more to kind of YouTube, you know, reaching out, creating, you know, short, short lessons for our customers, for viewers to just get a, a hint of what we are doing at Abari Academy. That's very, very good to hear. Uh, I have a lot of questions, and but okay. also we'll give the opportunity to the audience, uh, people who are watching live to ask some questions. Uh, you were teaching at the school, then you started doing online. Uh, are you doing as part-time or you are doing as full-time online teaching of Swahili okay. language? Yeah, yeah, so that's a good question because I was teaching you know, full-time. So by, by the time it's June, that was the summer break that I couldn't, you know, our school, you know, all the kids and teachers and everybody was on summer vacation. So that's when I started teaching Swahili. So uh, by the time that I started teaching so healing, so the trend, uh, the response was, was fairly good compared to what I expected because at some point, maybe four, four years back, I tried to teach Swahili, but it was mostly local 
for local clients and it was kind of hard like parents had to come and drive kids over there you know wait for them and so it was taking it was kind of a whole lot so for that matter it, it didn't take off so i had to quit i couldn't do much about it so when i started this uh Barry academy last june and found the response from parents you know and the kids themselves so uh, i saw i kind of saw the trend and in the desire you know, I mean, from the parents for the kids to learn Swahili. So as a result, when it was time for me to go back to teach, it was August, you know, 2020, that when the schools are opening and all that. So I, I kind of took a chance and say, okay, so I mean, I kind of saw the trend. And, and, and I think, uh, you know, teaching at a public school is very demanding. You know, it's really not uh, just like a seven to four. Like a noble now. profession. It's just yeah. another vocation. Yeah, yeah, it's a job that you're taking home. You're, you're taking home, you're sleeping with it, you're working up with it because it's a lot of preparation and all that. So I figured if I had to teach Swahili and at the same time doing the teaching, so either I'm going to gain one, lose the other. And then and for, I just didn't like the idea of me losing my Swahili business because I'm always a business oriented person. I mm -hmm. always wanted, you know, to get a business opportunity. So when I saw this, I was like, okay. So uh, as long as, it, you know, at the moment I can see that I can be able to pay a bill too. You know, at the same time, you know, I know that I say if you work harder, try, because the demand is there, I kind of figured it, especially via the Zoom. So I took a chance and then I had to quit my job, you know. So I, I was like, okay, I'm not going to go back. So I had to resign and, and, and just, you know, try to focus on this because I saw a big picture out of it. Yes. Yeah. I will have questions on moving completely from employment to self-employment ownership of everything but let's continue on the language part uh how do you convince or what are the benefits for the parents who both are not east africans or are mm. not from swahili speaking culture for instance for me i'm from tanzania my wife is american yes the obvious swahili will be there but let's say the person is the father is from Nigeria, the mother is from Sweden, and the, they're in Europe, or they're here in America. Or let's say they are both Africans, but from different countries. They, they want their children to learn another language. What are the benefits you see for people to know another language, especially like bigger language like Swahili, or Arabic here in America, or Spanish here in America, or French in America, or even other countries in the world we live right now? What are the benefits? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Uh, so Swahili is the most spoken language in Africa, and uh, as you, as you, I mean, of course, it, it's mostly East Africa and then going to Central, like say Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda. They're not so good at it, but yeah, yes, yeah, some Ugandans as well. You know, um, when you go to like DRC in all those areas, Rwanda, Burundi, um, mm -hmm. Zambia, you know, Mozambique. So it's it's like kind of. A lot, and, and, and now it's even taught in a lot of universities across, I mean, in Africa, you know, including South Africa. So one thing I can tell about Swahili is the most spoken language in in, 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 uh, in Africa. And, 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 it, and as we already know that Africa is a growing continent, it's, it's a developing continent. There's a lot more opportunities. Stay compared to like America or Europe, these places are already developed. You know, this place is expensive. There, there's a lot, you know, penetrating the market here. You know, you will take a lot of money and a lot of capital because it's already developed. There's a lot of people who already have a lot of money to compete with when it comes to business and other opportunities. So, uh, so to me, I really convince people, you know, first of all, I mean, if you're coming, say, from Nigeria or from Ghana or from uh, or any other part of you know you know Africa, you 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 will find that you are more you have more opportunities in Africa, especially when it comes to business opportunities. And and that is, we know that language is just like the way money. Also, language is the medium of exchange. Also, you know, so like when you come to America, you gotta you gotta have US dollars. At the same time, you gotta know English. So that's that wanna give you you know you're gonna an upper edge when it comes to business. So the same thing to Africa when you really know the language. You know, especially Tanzania is a growing is a growing country, and I was already know that there's a lot of foreigners coming over there, and they continue to come because of the opportunities the country has to offer. You know, so I would strongly urge you know all you know Africans as, as, as well just know that just like the way you you uh, motivate your kids to learn other language like French or maybe Chinese. You know, also think about you know pushing your kids to learn Swahili. So you you maximize you'll be maximizing or expanding opportunities for your kids. 
that's very good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a challenge because especially myself, I'm a parent of uh, one speaking Swahili, one doesn't. It's a challenge when the kids are growing up. They have minimal just, oh, see, I can talk for me. I, I talk 100% Swahili. My wife speaks English, but when they go to school, wherever they go, you cannot control. There will be, so sometimes it's very tough, but it's a very good thing. I can agree. Once someone has extra language, extra culture, makes you more competitive, whether it's in business, whether it is in employment, whether it is even the way of quicker thinking. So it has a lot of benefits in that particular way. Uh, so, uh, currently, majority of your customers or majority of the students you are dealing with are uh, here, either US or Canada, most Northern America. How are you expanding to Europe or even in some kids in Africa or in Asia, like someone wants there to have these kind of classes? How does that work? And also, yeah. that you mentioned about Zoom, but what is the minimum for instruction do you do kind of that? Okay. Yeah, so uh, it's true that it's a, it's a challenge to, to, you know, penetrate other markets because we have few kids in Europe. Right? At the same time, we have, um, you know, a few kids in Africa too, you know, like uh, some parents may be coming from Tanzania or Kenya, maybe they're diplomats or may, may, may they may work for the United Nations and in other part of Africa as well. And they still want their kids to, to you know, get to know Swahili. So we have those kind of kids. So, so, um, so that's an, uh, another thing that I'm trying to penetrate. Whether I, I cooperate with the, you know, embassies, you know, um, yes. you know, Tanzanian embassy from different, you know, areas around the globe. You know, if, if they could be able to reach out, because at the same time, while we're doing a business, but also we're expanding, you know, the language. We are expanding the country. So we're like kind of marketing the country because yeah, well, you can't talk Swahili without talking, you know, Tanzania at the same time. Yeah, so I'm so that's the thing. I'm trying to reach out to communities, you know, uh, and I believe that once we go more into YouTube, that could also help. So because YouTube is some, you know, more you know reachable to other parts of the world as well. Yes, uh, that is very good, and we'll keep uh, on our end whatever we can share. So any person who is here wants to check the website, you can share on your Facebook. They can go to the Facebook and just share if you want. Or if they want to reach you with your phone number, you put the phone number there so someone can be able to reach you to see how you can be able to uh, learn the language and the culture. And sometimes you cannot, you can just go, not this, I can speak from my experience because when I came to America, I came under a program which is teaching language and culture. Okay. But sometimes uh, someone might not want specifically the language, but can be introduced to the culture first and then down the road in the language. So if you want to learn about maybe East African culture or like specifically just overall African, but specifically for Tanzania, for instance, it will be another way for just getting the introductory, okay, what is going on there, kind of that is different from reading from the book versus to get a class from someone who has the culture, who lived there, who can dream and think and has relative there. Even now you are cooking the food, which is sometimes both American and Af So those will be the benefits for some people also. Even if they don't want Swahili per se, let me start with the African culture in general, basics, and then I will choose whether I can go for Swahili or I can just continue with my English. So that is the opportunity for people. Yeah, that's right. So to add to, I mean, when it comes to culture, that's why we do virtual tours to our students, you know, get to know over there, we teach them about food, things like ugali, what people are eating over there. So we always do, I mean, we always do that. We, we try even to do even more, you know, and because there are certain people that may want to learn Swahili because they are about to go and visit the, the region. So for that matter, it is good to advantage to really get an idea of what is going on to that particular country yeah. and things like that you know so uh, th those are part of things that we are doing as well uh i have one question now i can go back uh to the decision of moving from fully employed which we call the most secured job which you started with to go to employ yourself, owning a business, self-employed. One, it is difficult even for born and raised here in America, but it becomes even more difficult for immigrants when we come here. We come here with a mindset, oh, if I 
go and just send it to Walmart, just pick the little bags. I can get $10 per hour. So we come in the mindset of working because most of the jobs which you have been raised in our countries, in Africa, Asia, Latin America, you just study and go to work. Most of us is that way. So when you come here, you continue that mindset. And the, what, how long did it take for you? And what was the drive that I cannot do this anymore? I have to own my own business. Yeah, to be honest with you, uh, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm always a person of business opportunities. I like business more than anything. So I mean, I've tried several businesses before. So when I found this, I mean, it, yes, it was hard because, you know, when you go to work, you are you're sure every two weeks to get your paycheck, to get benefits and all those kind of things, you know, pretty more secure about for how long. And, you know, as long as you're able to go to work, that's when you can get paid. If something happens when you're sick, uh, when you just want to move another part of the world, that means you have to leave everything behind. So it's secure for the short term, to be honest. A job is secure for the short term, but it really not is secure, secure. You're not going to take to the grave, you know. So that's the thing. So uh, so as I say, yes, it was kind of scary, you know, get out of your comfort zone. You know, but I knew that it's just going to be for some time. And, and I knew, and, and the thing is about a, uh, a business opportunity, it can just show up uh, just at this particular, the doors can open only at a certain time. So that means if you don't jump in right then, you find it harder for you to do that in the future. Yeah. You know? While the jobs are always there waiting for you, even myself, I mean, as long as I'm my education, I can go back to teach at any time if I want to. You see, but building foundation for me was important because I figured the doors has opened. Okay. This is an opportunity that has presented itself. So if it, if it wasn't me, then somebody else would jump into it. Say, for example, I would say, okay, I don't want to do this right now. I feel I prefer to do my job. Somebody could jump into it and overtake me. You see, so I figured, okay, let me put on my all. Let me build a foundation, you know. So when I have a strong and firm foundation in the future, you know, I, I could go back to work and still do this business at the same time because uh, the kids, you know, they're learning in the evening. They have to go to school first or they're doing it on weekends, you know. So that also could, I could work and do that. But only after I have built a, a strong foundation, I've marketed myself because initially it's kind of hard to get the word out. You know, it also prepared the, the lesson to vision and, and, and all those kind of things. You know, all about creating. Because when yeah. you're doing things and you really don't have anybody to copy from, so that means <laughs> that's when the authenticity is coming from. So you really have to work harder, put, you know, creativity, reader, research, market, and, and, and nobody, and, and I say nobody, will tell you how to do business. It has to be, it has to be something you own. You just have to to combine here and here and here, you create something unique of your own. So it's a lot of work. So I, I, as I say, for anybody, you can go to work at any time. But when you have a business opportunity, it's better to just go out and grab it right then. And then you figure it out later. Uh, apart from the work and other things, one of the things also, uh, people, when they make a decision whether to go for self-employed or continue with that one we are talking about the benefits that's number one usually like, okay how will i be able to do that uh but also uh some people while this is moving that way some people they take uh self-employment owning the business as an opportunity for tax write-off uh can you explain to someone uh the benefits uh of being uh self-employed when it comes to tax and other opportunities, even taking a loan, all these kind of things than being just employed somewhere and you go you as you, but here you can go you as a uh, limited company liability. How does that be more benefit in this particular area than the other one? Yeah, okay, that's very true. Uh, when you do a business, there's more flexibility. <laughs> there's more flexibility when it comes to taxes because a lot of things that, in a lot of costs that a tax deductible compared to, like, say, when you are hired. Because when you're hired, you really don't have um, any option. They just have to take their payroll tax, no matter what. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't matter what you're going to do with the rest of the money, but they just have to take it. Whether the money, the rest of the money is enough for you or not, but they just have to make sure that they take the payroll tax. But for business, uh, yeah, I, 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 I would see that there's a lot of benefits when it comes to taxes. And, uh, 
yeah, it, it's true. A lot of things are deductible, traveling, you know, even food or whatever, you know, internet. You you cannot deduct internet from here. Yeah, you, you, when you file your regular taxes, you know, but uh, when it comes to business, yes. I mean, there's a lot, a lot, a lot others. Yeah, but that's not the only benefit that you get. Flexibility, you know, just be your own boss. You really don't have anybody to scare you that, you know, you did this wrong, that you're going to be fired, or you're getting first write-up, second write-up, and things like that. So there's a, uh, I feel like there's more, of a, <laughs> there's more of a peace of mind, you know, to be yes. honest, you know, especially if you have a family, you have kids, there's a lot of flexibility. And another thing I can tell you that also, uh, when, you, when you're getting paid, uh, you are, you are, your income is fixed. For the most part, I, I until you rate when you wait for that raise, you know, yeah. they, they if they give it to you at the end of the year. But you know, I remember myself, you know, at some point when I truly needed money, like if I really, 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 really need money right now, I mean I can work so hard, you know, market, market, do this, do that. I can do so much <laughs> more, you know. So and then and, 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 and honestly, and, and that's the biggest thing that I feel like it 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 it's it, it, financial flexibility. You truly have financial flexibility. Yeah. If you want to make more, you can always make more. Yeah. If you, you, you it means like in employment, if my I get four thousand per year, I mean per month, uh, meaning by the end of the year they can give raise two percent, no matter how hard you work, that is the raise. But yes. in my business, if I work hard, I put two hours extra every single day, I can increase more customers, I can increase my business. So that means. There is an uh, unlimited amount on how I can raise, I can get raised in a year than this one, which is a fixed. To get even, if you get 4%, it will be so special here in America. But majority, they go maximum is 3%, which is small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one thing I can say. Not so much unlimited, but yes, you can expand. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, like, you can, like, I can give, Yeah, I can give an example for this, my YouTube, for instance, I'm giving an example. Uh -huh. If I want to get more money this month, I put more videos. <laughs> okay, okay. If I say, let me add it three hours every single day, that is something else. And if I die or I retire, I can transfer the business to someone else. But if you retire, next week they put another employee. <laughs> That's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, so that is a very good way Uh and for me, usually I encourage most of the immigrant, even if you are not going to be fully business person in America, but just to try to find a way of a side house on the side to keep growing slowly. But at one point you can decide, okay, can I do this full time or not? But just, but if, don't wait until you retire, then let me go to do business. You have lost so many years, you could grow and take more chances. You can start doing Amazon. You can do like online teaching. You can do some uh, uh, eBay. And even like those Amazon, eBay, you can decide like, I don't need to do anything. I buy, it goes to Amazon. They pack, they fit, they sell. They give you not bigger profit, but mm -hmm. it's started to start. Like find a way on how you can start a side hustle. It can help you on one way or another. Because if you do that one, even if how small it is, you do for 10 years, it is easier you can say you can quit, but if you don't do that at all, 10 years to come, 20 years to come, and if you are not in a very good, like those high tech, or you are not in the, uh, you see medical, you'll be ending getting paid this small amount of money and get you stressed every single day. Yeah, that's right. Because when you do like a side hustle, like you say, even if it gives you two, three hundred dollars extra every month, that it, 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 so it, what it will, it will do is you give that kind of money that you can spend maybe for gas and food, and you can be able to save your your, your paycheck for the most part. Yes. You know, because one the scary thing about uh, I mean, I say a paycheck is like when you just get it and it's just going down. You know, you pay. You know, take power. You know, maybe rent or mortgage, maybe. I mean, I'm telling you, just a check is just going, I mean, all the way. And then before you know it, two, three days after a page, after getting paid, you're, you're looking forward for the, for the another two weeks to come to get yeah. paid again. Yeah. So that's the thing. When you have a side house, so even like even when I was going, I was teaching full time before I started teaching Swahili. I've always been teaching math. I started teaching tutoring, math tutoring since 2013. I still do right now, you know, yeah. also. I still do. I don't do in the you know as in that capacity you know as as i used to
because I kind of feel like I'm so busy with so healing. That's where my focus is. Because when I was doing math, it was kind of hard. You know, I couldn't get another person to to teach that for me and me pay them because I just yeah. don't try that much. And and not many people know it's math. You know, so uh, it's kind of I can't find a substitute. But when it comes to Swahili, I can teach and also I can get other people like helping me. Like right now, I have like three more t teachers that are, are helping me to, to teach Swahili. So that's the reason. But I still keep the math. I still, you know, it's going to give me, you know, yeah. give me not that much per se, but that's okay. And besides, I'm changing, you know, I'm changing the world because you're helping kids. Exactly. You know, the kids are coming and struggling and then you see that they're improving, their parents are appreciating. So there's, kind of satisfaction also that you're getting because sometimes it's not just all about money. Uh, and I want to challenge you on a few things. Uh, just the way you are growing your business, there are a few things you have to think at a higher level. Okay. Number one, you need to create an app. App, okay. So let me put that down. <laughs> because uh, which will be easier, someone... Uh, you put the same materials in the app and it's okay. a subscription. Even if it's $5 per month, okay, people can be able to subscribe. Uh, pay okay. the app. You can, people can be able to use that one. Okay. That is, even if you go, like I can give you an example, those uh, Rosetta, they don't have, first of all, they don't, the app doesn't have swipe. And if any of their soul is a very poor, I don't know, they take from somewhere, someone going to the Google search, it, Google Translate. So you need to create your own app. That would be something as a bigger project. That okay. Would be, but you don't need to teach, you just pay. People pay you while you are sleeping. You are going for vacation in Kilimanjaro, going to Mount Kilimanjaro to the peak. You are going there, you are enjoying. You don't need to worry. Money goes through the app. Yeah, that's, that's right. One. Okay. Number two, you need to create also, apart from you teaching, you need to create those teaching lesson, or recording all the lessons, like in greetings, whatever, and put them as a uh, official package course. That means you can sell the course as audio book, kind of that. You can sell the same course as a video, which are on uh, Udemy website. You can put your course there. Someone can, can buy your course on Udemy. And if you have YouTube channel, YouTube channel, you are allowed to have membership. So if uh, someone is a member, maybe he's paying $5 per month, will be able to access those lectures again? So that okay. would be... Another different way that like you need to have other streams of different ways. And okay. also, you can also think about let's go even further. Let me create uh, some of the same classes because some can be audio. You put also them as a uh, podcast. You just okay. upload it. The same video, you just move the audio, go to the podcast. Go. So you don't need to make more. It's just how you stream everywhere. Meaning, okay. Apart, you can be able to teach, but you can be get be able to, to continue to spread so many because there are some people nowadays is podcast. People are going to using app, whatever. So you can have other things instead of just let me teach. Because usually I tell people when you create a business, among other things, find a business, yes, with a passion and everything, which you can sit one day, you can say, Today I want, don't want to work anything, or to, this week I don't want to work, but you don't get stressed about the money will come in other forms. That is That's building. right. So those are the things like, you can say, okay, students, this month, I'm going for vacation. This is your assignment to be able to do this one. You are gone. And money can still come through other ways. Not you come back, you are in the vacation, you are starting crying like, oh, if I'm buying a burger, I'm using more money. I don't have the money until I go back to teach you again. No, the money will be coming while you are still sleeping. So that will be the yeah. mindset for you to think about those kind of areas where you can be able to expand at a more higher level. Yeah, that's that's very good advice. Thank you very much. And it's something that I'm looking forward to, to implement. Yeah. yeah, because this June is just gonna be one year. So there's a lot to learn and a lot to structure. Yeah, but honestly, I mean, having online learning, like where you have subscribers, they can just come there and just learn, you know, that's my really number one goal at the moment right now. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, so part of this YouTube channel, usually we talk about life as immigrant, okay. as immigrant uh, and all those kind of things we wanted to share with people. And the bigger part is uh, 
you have been here for longer time, I will ask that question. But okay. that time you are coming, I'm coming, we didn't have this much of the social media. So the challenges we went through are a little bit higher than someone who is coming. And the purpose of being here on planet Earth is to make sure another person has easier path. I had that time, the person comes, doesn't need to start from negative. You can make sure, okay, avoid one, two, three, four. You can start from positive and continue. So I'll be asking two questions in immigration so that other people can also learn from you as immigrant. Okay. The first question is, how long have you been in the United States and how did you come to America? Okay, so I've been here 20 years. This is my 21. And uh, I came to the other, and I came as a student initially. Yeah, so I was doing my degree uh, computer science in Universal Jerusalem. So I did two years and I was going on the third and then that's when I came. But I, I, it's, a, it's a trip that I was keep chasing <laughs> ever since I started Universal Jerusalem. So by the time it matured, it was like almost time for me to go on the third year. And that means I was about to graduate, right? But I was like, okay, I'll take this opportunity because it, this is something that I truly wanted. And, and, and I thank God, you know, because I was hesitating. Should I <laughs> wait to graduate? You know, that was 2000 because I came October 2000. You know, or should I wait to graduate, which will be till probably June, you know, 20, in, I mean, uh, two, uh, 2001, you know, I can't believe that by the time I came 2000, you know, just a year later, you know, less than a year later, that's when it happened, September 11, and yeah. everything became everything so hard said. for some time. So that's why I say when the door is open, just take it. Don't think too much. Don't think everything is going to settle itself because you don't know why that door is open for that particular moment. Because you don't know, we don't know the future. I just didn't know that they're going to be, you know, September 11. And then, you know, so uh, I thank God. So as I say that I came 2000, came as a student, you know, later on I just became a resident of America, you know. So uh, it has been, a, it has been a, uh, a challenge, you know, initially. Because when you come here as an international student, you really have to work hard. You know, tuition is expensive, and you want to get the education. Because if I, for me, I came as a student, and my fellow students, uh, they were graduating University of Jerusalem, and then I'm here. Uh, even though I transferred my credits, but it helped a big deal. You know, uh, so that means I don't have to take too many other classes to pay too much more money, you know, yeah. but also it was a big hassle because I had to work so hard to make sure that I pay for my tuition. And at the moment we were living, you know, several people in, 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 in one apartment, you know, so we can be able to, because you don't have a professional job, you know, you just don't have education. So working McDonald's and, you know, <laughs> working at a mall and all those kind of things. So I, I had to work more you know, more hours having two jobs, you know, less time for myself, you know, but it eventually paid off. That's good to hear. Uh, if a new person tomorrow is getting to the flight to come to America, what are the most important things you will tell the person to avoid in order to have a very good success here in America? Yeah. So to be honest, uh, one thing I can tell a person who is coming to America, education is the most important thing. You know, I mean, if you really can press to what's cozy, you can come here 2000 working at a job that paid $10 an hour and then 20 years later, you're still making 20, you know, $10 an hour. You know, I've seen that, you see. So, uh, so uh, the only thing that will really make a difference is education. So if it, it doesn't matter how long you've been here, if you don't have education, you still gonna make the minimum. Yeah, until when you really have a special certain skill that is marketable. So even in, when it comes to education, you also have to be very careful what you're learning because uh, certain things, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to get jobs. So you have to do your research. A lot of people are doing nursing. Uh, it's good, you know, but I also will advise people to churn it out and look into others, not only nursing. Nursing is good, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, but just also look at other opportunities. You know, I don't focus all on nursing just because somebody <laughs> is doing nursing. I mean, for me, honestly, I'll tell myself because 
when I graduated, it was kind of hard for me to penetrate the market, you know, because I had a degree in computer science. But for, for whatever reasons, I just didn't want to do nursing. I have a friend of mine, she graduated, you know, with me, computer science. And a year later, she decided to go back to, you know, nursing LPN, you know, she got pretty quick, which was, it's like nine months, you know, less than a year. But yes, it kind of gave her high a cushion. But for me, I was like, I want so much more. I say, I want so much more. You know, I mean, <laughs> I say, I want so much more. You know, I'm not just going to say, though, just because this is give me a temporary comfort. You know, I didn't want to, uh, I mean, <laughs> so much more. So I, I suffered. And I know I suffered because, it, uh, you know, uh, it was kind of hard. But eventually, you know, I was able to find my ways, you know, and penetrate, you know, the market in, 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 in and eventually later on, I changed to education, did a master's in education. And, and, and then now I can tell that the possibilities are endless. There's so many possibilities. <laughs> yeah, so. Education, what other things can you advise someone? Uh, someone uh, about what? Who's coming to America, like, to start their life. So that's what I'm saying, that, you know, first thing, uh, there's another thing also I would, try to advise people uh, from my, very, my own, very own experience. Uh, when you come to America, don't be that kind of person. If you want to grow, you know, as a place, don't be that kind of person greedy like you. You just change it too many jobs. You know, stick to one job. You can start, you know, at, you know, down here. But I've seen people growing to a level of a manager, but only because they stay in one company for far too long. It's so hard for a company to hire somebody from outside, you know, at a, uh, you know, higher position than to really uh, pick people who have been there, patient. So as I know, ch change is going to happen. You're going to have, uh, you know, supervisors who are going to give in trouble from time to time. But, uh, you know, I really, I didn't do that, but I've learned that, you know, that I've seen people growing, especially if uh, an immigrant, you gotta show your patient there. You gotta work hard, go through the trials and tribulations, and then you eventually gonna overcome. That supervisor that is giving you her time today is not gonna be there forever. You know, after some time, they're just gonna go away, maybe go another position, or maybe move outside the company and all that. That's the only thing, and that's the thing that Americans are using it. You know, they are very, very patient. They can work at one company for twenty years, you know, thirty years. You know, <laughs> starting small, but that's how they make money, get more benefits, you know, going to get raised, and then they're going to get change positions, you know, eventually. So that's my big advice, to be honest, because if you keep changing jobs, you're going to be at the lower level all the time. And you are, some people can see you are more, uh, I mean, you are not a reliable person. Because yeah, you can quit then you go to another place. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. But nobody told us that, you know, it's, it's something that we just had to learn the hard way. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. uh, when you came here, can you talk about uh, learning about credit, building credit, credit score, credit card, all those kind of things, loan? Okay, okay, yeah, oh, okay, great. You know, uh, one thing uh, for me, to be honest, for a long time, I've been running away from, uh, from you know, like loans and things like that. You know, I just I just prefer to buy things cash, you know, like cars and all that. And then the only reason uh, I stayed away from those kind of things because I didn't like the idea that I had to work so hard to pay somebody else. You know, and uh, I really get my lesson. That was uh, when America, there was a recession. You know, I had this job, you know, it was a computer job. And uh, and uh, right in the middle of the recession, that was 2009, I think, yeah. November. Yeah. You know, I just came from a trip and then came to realize that I don't have a job, you know. And uh, it was the lowest point uh, of my life here in America. You know, thank God that I had siblings that they helped me to survive because I was single at the time. Yeah. You know, uh, so I figured if you don't have debt, you really can't survive even, even at the lowest moment. But imagine that you stay without a job. For me, I stayed without a job for like three months, but that was the longest time. I'm always been that kind of person, you know, who working and I didn't have any business, you know, so I just depended on, on, on a job. 
So uh, I can see that when you don't have a lot of debt, you can survive. You can be able to weather the storms than somebody who is so much in debt. So just stay away. Like if you have credit cards used for only basic things, you know, just to be for building, nice. not if yeah. you're going to the debt, going to unnecessary expenses. You use no. that to, just to build it purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go to like vacation. I want to go to Cancun. I mean, it really save your money. Do you have money to go there? If you really don't, then you just don't because things can go south so quick without you, your knowledge. Yeah. And yeah. So for immigrants, especially people coming here, if they do not know, there is the contract at will, employer can fire you at any minute. Yeah. Job at any minute, as long as it's not a discriminatory reason. You can say, oh, from today, I don't need to give a reason, I quit. They can yeah. say, oh, today you are fired. So, <laughs> so that's a, that's the biggest thing. You are right. That's the biggest thing that made me to feel like it's not secure, you know, unless you have a business. And even if you do have a business, you you can't. You don't know. Like say, for example, during the COVID, a lot of people lost their business. Or you 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 know. So you always want to be that kind of person. You wanna you wanna make sure that your future is secure, not only yours but also of your kids too. You know. You don't wanna die today. You're so much in debt in the. And they take everything to pay the debt, you know, and, and you know, kids are left with nothing. Yeah. Uh, there is one person has a question. Omari Wilondia uh, is asking, what measures would you recommend to compete with jobs, job market here in America? <laughs> one thing I can tell, you know, besides nursing, as I say, nursing is always there. But at the same time, I really want, you know, uh, immigrants to just be competitive, not just going to one career. You know, so there's an engineering. I came to realize engineering is very, very marketable in America. If you do like a civil engineering, if you do uh, electrical engineering, a lot of engineers in America, they are very competitive, you know, and they get paid very good money, you know. So we just don't want to be nurses. We, we can do so much more. You know, you can go for medicine. You can be a pharmacist. A pharmacist, yeah, yeah. you can be a doctor, you know, you can be an engineer, you can be a, a, a computer scientist, you can be a computer. And then the good thing is also when you go into a major, don't really think much about being hired. Think about it. Uh, can you can you utilize it maybe eventually, even start as a side hustle and then eventually probably carry your own business, you know. So just look at the big picture. And is it transferable? Can you take it to Africa, your knowledge? You know, can you take it to China? You, you don't want to get education only that is good for America, like, and it's not good, you know, yeah, you see? So that's the thing that uh, I kind of noticed here in America. And except going into hard times, you know, uh, for a certain period of time while you build a foundation, you know, because once your foundation is built, then you're, you're good. Yeah, and also there is one person, Muhammad is adding on that, uh, Muhammad Ali said, it also depends on your passion and what you are good at. For instance, myself, I can give you an example. I know <clears throat> uh, science pays a lot. I know becoming a nurse pays a lot. But I don't have that passion. Like, I'm not good at, like, no matter what, I, I cannot. Like, if I go to do that, I'll be doing, yes, it's for money, but will I be good at what I'm going to do? So, I'm talking too much. Started the politics. Maybe when I retire, <laughs> when yeah. I retire, I'm going to be governor or senator, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. I think the good thing is to look at the big picture. But for me, let me tell you, for me, say, for example, right, I'm now a teacher. And I, I've always, always been in science. You know, you know, back then, if you're doing good, they say, yeah, yeah, go, you're going to be a yeah. doctor. You're going to be this, you know. So I went for PCM when I was in high school, physics, chemistry, mathematics. You know, I went to computer science. But honestly, I always was feeling something was missing. Like I was not, I don't know what, but whatever it is, it was just like a really, you know, missing piece, you know, piece in, you know, in, the, in the puzzle. So, but when I went into education, you know, uh, uh, I came to realize that I was not meant so much for science rather for for art for creativity and things like that you know because i didn't like doing the same thing every day i wanted something that changes I wanted yeah. something that can intrigue my mind you know so i came to realize when it comes to education i think i'm in the right spot because the 
teaching, you know, kids adults it requires a lot of creativity. So you really have to to deal. It depend on who you are teaching. You know how to be creative, how to prepare the lessons, how to create the flow, how to produce results. Because when you're teaching, you are, you want to get the results that you truly want. You know, if you're not getting that, then you have to change your method. You you something gotta change. Yeah. So I, I feel like I, I, I'm so much satisfied and I feel like I'm so much into art. You know, I, as right, right now, I say I, I want to go so much into marketing, you know, especially like I want to be very creative when it comes to marketing, when it comes to creative marketing art, you know, online marketing, things like that, you know. So so you're right that it, it depends on your passion. If you really can know what your passion is, because when you're growing in Africa, they really don't give an opportunity to discover yourself. <laughs> so it's going to push you into a certain stream, yeah, without your knowledge. Yeah, so that's my thinking. Uh, there is another question here. Uh, the question okay. is... Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, what are the procedures... Uh, to teach Swahili online. That is from Rabi Fadili. Okay. okay like, for, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, what procedure do you take? I don't know whether, but just for you here in America, and if someone is in Africa wants to do like online, like, yes, you can register the business, but what are the things you had to consider, for instance, like tools? I think that's what is, yeah, is looking at. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Rabel, I think it all depends on your on your customers. First of all, you you really has you really have to know how you're going to reach out to your customers. Once you have customers, you can always figure out how you're going to teach them. I'll tell you the truth because when I started teaching Swahili, I really didn't know how to teach Swahili. I, I I mean I know I'm a teacher, I'm a math teacher, and then teaching Swahili and then teaching them <laughs> online. Yes, I speak Swahili, you know, but. Uh, I didn't go to school teaching Swahili. You see, so uh, so 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 you when you have a passion for something, you are always gonna find some ways to do that. You are always gonna penetrate. You are always gonna learn. You know, so th that's what happened to me. So the thing I say that find know how you can find your customer base. Once you have customers, everything gonna flow. You know, you know. So you are always gonna learn. You know, you're gonna network. You're gonna collaborate. You're gonna reach out to those people that are already teaching. You know, Swahili, you're going to go online, you're going to research, you're going to buy books, and you can do so much more. Yeah, so uh, so just don't limit yourself like you can't do it. Just think about, do I really want to do it? Do I have customers? Oh, the most important part, how can I reach out to customers? Okay, once you have customers, everything going to flow into scenario. Because when you start a business, you don't get the big picture. You don't know where you're heading. You really don't. You're just like you're, you're tipping your toes into the water and everything, you know, got we will flow into a scenario eventually. Uh, speaking of the business and the mindset, I don't know whether you have done, uh, you can answer, but if you haven't, I will explain some few. Uh, is Kevin uh, is asking, is he selling items on eBay and Amazon a viable business? And how is commerce business in the United States? So to be honest, I'll say that uh, it, it, I know two people very close to me that are doing this business, eBay and Amazon. They're very busy and then they're selling and they're, they're making money. So, so it's, it's, it's up to you. What are you selling? You know, uh, what do you want to sell? How is the market for it? So one thing I, I realized, <laughs> there are certain people who are just selling everything. So it's just like they have a, a, a uh, garage, you know, full of different items, you know, but I know a person close to me that is selling parts. Like he, he has a degree. I mean, he, he got a degree in engineering that helped him so much. So he can get parts, you know, like hardware parts, like parts from different parts, like maybe lawnmowers or, you know, things like that, you know, small machines. And they break into pieces, you know. So he breaks into pieces and then he, uh, he, he's selling those things. And I sell it. He, he's making money, you know. So as I say, it depends. You want to say, so it, every time when you, you do you put creativity, you, you, you're you going to make more. If you want to say, uh, because you want to say something just like the way it is, like you, shoes, you take a shoe and you sell, then you, you will make more, but you, you, you're going to have competition. But if you want to put creativity into it, right? Yeah, you're changing, like the way he's doing. He's just taking, he's breaking things apart, you know? So not everybody can do it, but he, 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 Research, you know, an item, 
you know, and it break and, and sell. So he is doing good business. So think about what you want to sell and, and then just do. But it is, yes, a lot of people are making a lot of money selling things on uh, uh, Amazon and, and eBay. Yeah, especially, uh, I kind of feel like eBay is selling more than than, uh, you know, than Amazon. Because eBay is like all around the globe, you know, easily, you know. Mm -hmm. oh, just one second. Someone is calling me. Uh, okay. Just one sec. Uh, let me. Oh, the problem of. Yeah. Okay, I can add something also. Uh, just one sec. Okay. Uh, okay, one sec. Sorry. <laughs> so I, I was going to also to add something on Amazon and the uh, on Amazon and what and eBay. Uh, the other thing which. The other thing about also, I know some few people who do the same similar business online. Uh, for instance, uh, there is one uh, guy who was our neighbor in California. Uh, he had a very good job, uh, and his wife is a teacher. So the company moved from California to Ohio. So they didn't want to move to Ohio because the grandparents for their for their children they are there so we don't want to take it so they say okay we'll stay here so the guy decided to stay back in california so while he, he was just on the uh looking for a job obviously you get unemployment benefits he started doing amazon i mean the ebay so he started going to buy things in the garage because his job he was uh buying like a same similar like buying parts or products from a certain company and is selling there, so he started like buying from uh from these the uh garage sale, and he's going to sell on eBay. What he was making on eBay was more than the salary he was getting. So that wow. was thing about it was twelve twenty fifteen. Up to mm -hmm. today, he's never gone back to work. So his job mm -hmm. is that one. Mm -hmm. I know uh, that is American. I know Tanzanian is doing on 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 Amazon. What was doing is, uh, is because they have the ful fulfillment center, both Amazon and eBay, you don't need to have anything at your home. So you can buy your products and ship to them and they sell on your behalf. But mm -hmm. again, even software or certain platform you can detect to determine which product is selling now, like like Google mm -hmm. Trends, the trend on behavior. So you need to invest your time too to learn your customers. Mm -hmm. Just okay, you want to buy Colgate and they sell them Colgate. No. You need to, to start like what product, mm -hmm. how much, if all of those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. that's my, right. I did a little bit on eBay, but not a lot. Uh, it didn't do well because my focus was doing things in Tanzania. So the few parts we the, I, when I closed in Tanzania, so the few things I had, I had to sell them on on eBay. But still, that is my goal also to continue, to also to open that one. So my mm -hmm. goal would be like maybe by next year. To make sure that I have certain products uh, to do that, I have I've mentioned as for African clothing, and I want to put some of America. So just to have the full store and they start doing that on, also online. Yeah, yeah. But again, it's a business like any other business. There are challenges. You have to invest your time. You have to learn yeah. to do anything. But the yeah. good thing when they start selling small, you can just sell one item. Then you don't. They sell. You wait. Mm -hmm. Another one. That's the good thing. You can just start selling then one item in a month. Slowly, you can keep learning to know what time do you need to mm -hmm. upload. Because the guy said there is a time to upload, like if what he knew. This time for most of his customers, they are checking. What time you must ship your, your item. You have to respond, so you have to need to app. There are so many things. It's just like even YouTube. They give the, the, the analytics. What time people will be online? What time will be able to do this? Like All those kind of things you need to consider. Yeah, you're, you're very true. That's very true because it, even when you start doing it, you're not going to get all that, right? Until when you, say for example, until when you started doing your YouTube, that's when you get to those analytics, right? So yeah. it's the same thing like when you eBay, Amazon, go out and start your business. You know? And then the good thing about online business, you can work and do other things you know, while you're doing business at the same time. And then learn the trend, okay? I mean, eventually you get to know I mean, your, your customers, your, your reviews are, the, are your biggest, you know, you know, uh, 
I mean, feedback. Because when you start getting those reviews and all those kind of things, then you're going to know what is moving, what is not moving. And then you're going to adjust, you know, based on, you know, what you see. Yeah. So it's always possible. I mean, in business, um, nobody should tell you that you can't do this, you can't do that. You just talk. And then your result can be different from somebody else. Exactly. Based on how you are utilizing your data that you're getting. Yeah, that's why even Mohammed here, Mohammed Ali says there is no specific formula to do business online. Be creative, have a presence in social media. Yeah, that's right. That's very true, Mohammed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, for online business, how do you market your business? Like, how do you attain customers? I think that is the answer which has been already responded by online. How you do? But if you want to add uh, on your end, how do you do that uh, to get your customers for uh, teaching, for instance? How do you market? Yeah, how do I market? Yeah, to be honest, uh, initially, I was using WhatsApp a lot. I was networking through WhatsApp, and then I went into, and that's how I get my business started, to be honest, to WhatsApp groups and things like that. You know, but eventually, I jumped into uh, you know, Facebook. Facebook has been very helpful because you can reach out so many. And Facebook, you can, you can start marketing to those groups. You know, there's a lot of little groups within Facebook. Yeah. So uh, for me, I was targeting those groups like people who are in America, people from Kenya, people from Tanzania, in Uganda, and things like that. You know, so I was targeting those, and they helped me to to be where I am. So, but like where I am right now, I kind of feel like I've almost reached a ceiling. When it, when it comes to, you know, those customers who are really willing to register their kids, I'll see how it goes this summer, you know, so that means it's time for me to really break the ceiling and go into a higher realm, like say YouTube, you know, try to, to you know, yeah, so go bombastic, you know, that's what I'm looking for right now because I kind of feel like, it, yeah, so it, it's like I've tried to market the best I really could in, in reaching out to those uh, families as much as I really could, you know, and, and, and it's, it's up to me now to just, you know, use the other channels <laughs> for marketing. Uh, there is a related question. What motivates you to teach Swahili language despite having a degree, basically master's degree, that can obtain a decent job? Yeah, that's very true. As I say, I was already teaching. You know, I was already having a, 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 a government job. You know, when you're a teacher, you're working for the government. You know, with benefits and all that. So, so when I got it, I mean, one thing. Let, let me tell you, <laughs> working for somebody is hard because you always have to meet their needs. And then being a teacher in America is very, very. You know, in a public school is very hard to be honest. You know, you got vacations, paid vacations. You know, good benefits by dealing with the teenagers like I was teaching high school. I mean, those kids are very, you know, I mean, energetic. I would say that. You, you know, so like you need to have a lot of energy too. You cannot go to work when you, you you don't feel well or you are you have less energy because that's so energy. They're gonna overpower you. You know. So I uh, mean, getting this opportunity, I figured, yeah, yeah, I think I'll I'll, I'll give it a try. You know, a lot of teachers are. I struggle. That will tell you they love to teach. A teacher love to teach because it's, it's fulfilling. You know, uh, you're teaching kids. You see them improving. It gives you a degree of satisfaction, but it, it's not easy. It's not easy teaching. You know, public it's just still okay. mm -hmm. It doesn't pay a lot. It's just normal. <laughs> yeah, it just just it, just like he he say that he's kind of decent. It's not like he's gonna pay a whole lot of money. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, you're just gonna be decent, but also if you teachers they have a lot of time in America, like he, you know, if you're, you've been teaching after some time, you already create your your flow, you know, they are just like seven to three, you know, so three o'clock, they're gone, you know, uh, and then you, you have summer break almost two and a half months, you have a, a bunch of breaks in between, so they do business. I've seen a lot of teachers, you know, they have all, um, they're able to do business when they get off from school. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you can make you can mix, but for me, I just didn't want to do. I said, let me focus on this first. Let me see where it takes me. But as as I say, I can always go back to be a teacher. But my desire is for a business, especially this is transferable. I can take this job anywhere because I do online. Yeah, that is a very good answer. 
uh, myself, uh, I've been also looking uh, the peace of mind, having a freedom, uh, and the concept of salary. So mm -hmm. if you go to what the concept of salary, if we go at, in most cases, is is the amount of money you are given after doing a certain particular job. But in most cases, the salary is not supposed to exceed the 30 days. Because if it exceeds the 30 days, you have the leftover money, you might not come to work. So they have to give motivation, the money to be used within a specific two or three weeks so that you can be having more respect to the employer and you have to come back next day, next or next day. And that is a typical capitalist uh, strategy, which is there. Which, during the time of Cap, uh, Marx, Karl Marx, people, they can go and do a boycott and do all those kind of things. But nowadays, you can't because you negotiated the salary on your own. You cannot go and start like you breaking the machine like back in, in Industrial Revolution. If you break the machine, you were in jail. If you don't want, just end the contract and go away. So there are so many other things right now in the employment sector which doesn't give you the opportunity like if you own your own thing, uh, yes. which is better. So for me, also, if you, you, you tell me, uh, let's say, reduce 20% of my current income I can guarantee to get less twenty percent or thirty percent of my or even thirty percent of my current income monthly, but it's my own business. I'll take that chance because I know I'll be able to grow. But yes. no matter how much I work, the salary will be there, so I can predict how many what will be the increase for my job in the next ten years because I just added. 2%, 2%, or 3%, 3%, mm -hmm. 10 years. You go, oh, so, so for 10 years, I had just things of 10,000. But if I have a business for 10 years, my business will be bigger. Yes, I'll be having challenges. I'll work more hours sometimes, but it's mine. Mm -hmm. So it, it, there are those kind of challenges. Yeah. But yeah, for me, I will take the chance of owning my own thing than being employed by someone. Yeah, that's right. And then I'll tell you one thing I really hate about a job is when you have to go change jobs and you go to those interviews. The way they grill you and they, I mean, really, you find five people sitting there, you know. I mean, <laughs> so I think, they ask a stupid question because if you're asking me, what's your plan with your organization? Obviously, I'm going to lie. You're like, really? I will stay here for 50 years? No. I mean, there are certain questions that are irrelevant. I mean, <laughs> So I know. It's, it's, yeah, and then you need that job, and then you go there and they grill you like that. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I was, I was just that kind of person, man. I was not a teaser. I, I, I gave myself five years, that mm -hmm. maximum five years. I have to be a hundred percent depending on my YouTube. That is my goal. So, five mm -hmm. years, a half a million subscribers, and between five to ten thousand. US dollar per month. I can be traveling to make videos any country I want to go, make videos, come back here, put your taxi on right off. It was business trip, recording videos in Dubai, recording videos in, 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 in Africa. Then I'm set, I'm settling back. Then come here, have my goats, have my chicken, have my cows. That's my life. <laughs> That sounds a good plan. <laughs> yeah, for real. That sounds a good plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so let me give you the opportunity for you also to ask me a question if you have any question. Oh, oh me? Oh, okay, yeah. So maybe I should ask you, how did you, what motivated you to start this, you know, YouTube thing and what are the <laughs> challenges that you went through <laughs> and all yeah. that? How did you build your first clients, you know, subscribers and things like that? And and, and also, what what are, are the trends that you, <laughs> or, you know, maybe basically you give me the secrets of the business. Okay, that, that's a very good, good question. So for uh -huh. me, uh, Obviously, the culture of helping someone, it has been part of our life, like teaching and tuition, helping some classmate here and there, whatever. We have been growing through that kind of culture. So while I was in my... So for me, dream of coming to America was there 
since I was in fifth and sixth grade. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was just like, I must go and live in America. So back in 1995, 1996, that was the good 1994, 1995. It was the fire I have to live in America. But you cannot go anywhere. You were still a kid. So you just continue with your life and everything. So I used to have a lot of information. So while I was at the university, I came to know a lot of information about scholarships. So I started like burning a CD or printing some information. Oh, the, the scholarship contest scheme in Norway. Oh, Norfolk in Norway, Netherlands, whatever. Okay, I, I share with my friends. And they say, if this is true, why are you still here? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was the first challenge I was facing. So I said, okay, mm -hmm. people, because they know me, they don't care much. So let me go to, just like Jesus said, let me go to the, to the world. So I had it to start, so I started my blog in 2007. Okay. Well, the second year at the University of Dar es Salaam, I started my blog. So I was a scholarship blogger. It's the first blog on scholarship back in, I think, the, around the first in Africa. So I was just blogging scholarship, scholarship, scholarship. I came to America 2008 to continue the scholarship. In 2010, one day after my birthday, September 24th in 2010, I opened the YouTube channel. But I didn't know what is YouTube because I saw everybody's YouTube. So I created a YouTube channel and I made the first video about Green Card Lottery and I posted there. That's all. So for me, I was more focused on making blog posts, blogs, mm -hmm. posts. And I was famous for that. So when I started my YouTube, was more about one video per year. So on, on October, when there is a Green Card Lottery is when I post a YouTube video. So from 2010 to 2018, I had eight videos. Wow. That is the biggest mistake. I didn't know. And I didn't care much. I was more about it. And even I had a good camera. I make it, even you, Facebook was bigger. So even in my videos when I made, I post on Facebook or not on YouTube. I didn't know whether YouTube was subscribers, what does that mean? Whether even they will pay in their own. I didn't know that. YouTube was just about cow, like cats laughing when it started, all those kind of things. So 2008, Oh, 2009, 2008, I traveled to Kisumu, Kenya. So while I was in Kenya, I was on the weekend, I was alone. So I said, I have nothing to do. Let me record. I recorded like audios for Swahili. And that's about weight loss. And I posted them because I had nothing to do because it was a weekend and I have to stay alone in the hotel. So I didn't go to work. So I had to make like two or three audios. I posted those audios. They got good views. I said, okay, that's good. So I came back here, 2019, I started making more videos. I had like 1,000 subscribers or wow. 25, whatever. It was very, very low. So I said, I want to make YouTube serious. So I started reading about watching videos about YouTube, check everything. So I said, I want to be serious. I want to invest on YouTube. So I said, I want to make more videos. So the biggest mistake, the first question people are asking, how many videos can you be able to make in a in a week or in a month? That's the question you're asking. If I'm a YouTuber, how many videos should I make? So me, for me, I was making one video per year. Like if I make it a lot, it's maybe five or 10 in a year. So I was looking on, on YouTube. How many videos should you put someone put one per week, two per week, four per week? There is one guy who said, uh, work one video per day. That means you have 365 videos per year. I said, oh, that's a good goal. But for me, my mindset is, I need to have a goal which will be challenging. The goal which will force me to struggle. People tell me this is impossible. That's when I enjoy to, to break that record. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if I say I have to make 365, yes, there's a lot of videos, but I can do that if I decide. So I say I want to make 1,000 videos in a year. Wow. So the year later, I made 800 videos. Yeah, it was not 1,000, but it was 800 videos. So how many in a week? Some of the days I make, I, I, I can make even 20. Wow. For instance, the day before yesterday, I posted seven videos. Yesterday, I posted only four. Today, I've posted one. Before I talk to you, I had one. It's already, it's already, when we finish here, I click, I'm going to click publish. Wow. Tonight, I'm going to record three videos. So... For me, like now, so when I made that change to seriously make a video, so in this Swahili, the English video channel, this one, I can make at least 
30 to 50 videos in a month. Wow. And that's normal. So, because there's no down because they have to build a Swahili channel. And also, in the Swahili channel, I have to make also 30 to 50 videos. So, per month, I can make 100 videos for Swahili and English. And you know, average, how, how many minutes per video? Most of my videos, they are 10 and above. Okay. Most of them. Few can be eight, whatever, but yeah, but most of them I put 10 to 15 because the nature of the content I'm doing. So from that moment, because I've done that way, because at the beginning I was using like marketing, you try to put it on WhatsApp groups, whatever, all these kind of things, like how do you, but let's come to look analytics. People are watching my videos, not coming from WhatsApp. So I came to realize I'm wasting my time in WhatsApp. So I came to realize my job will be to put more videos. The more you put the videos on YouTube, the more people are watching, the more you get more watch hours, automatically YouTube will recommend your videos to other people. So okay. that will be my channel to keep growing automatically. So for me, uh, over 60% of my views are coming from recommended videos. YouTube is the one recommending my videos. Oh, wow. Because I've That's done a lot and a lot. So okay. that's so for instance, this month of uh April up to today, I've already uploaded over 51, uh, 51 videos already, and I have five days to go, which I have more than more than 10 videos to come. Wow, and what's the topic of your videos? Like that's many. <laughs> yeah, so with that particular change, from the day I changed that to like to be serious, like putting more videos. Now it's a guarantee in a month I get at least five hundred US dollars. A month. Wow. I used to get like 300 to 400. Now, because of going is continuous, that is like, for instance, now, now it is a lunch break. So on lunch break, I have to be live or have to make a video. So that is a commitment I put to myself. Oh, wow. So yeah. it's just another challenge, but the more you put, the more you do that. So the more I know, like the more I do the same way, if I do the same thing in five years, I know what is going to happen and I'm going to be a hundred percent Based on you. there are people on YouTube they make uh, per month a small amount fifty thousand, a hundred thousand yeah. that's normal. But again, like the, what we are saying, like right now I was telling to you while we are doing the, the same, we are doing the same. This one, this one you see here, is podcast recording. Podcast wow. is recording. At the same time, we are doing this one. It's going this way. Uh, also, I'm using the opportunity also. Uh, to make sure that uh, apart from podcast, I'm going to do Amazon affiliate. I'm going to do writing books. So there are other things I can put there. So even if let's say I was having COVID, I'm saying at home, even if I don't make a video, there are other things will be able to continue while life continues. Okay. That's very good. So it looks like if you had a product, because I know you're writing books. So if you have another product, that means you could market that very well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so right you, now I'm writing a book about YouTube. Yes, there are books about YouTube written by people with 1 million subscribers. It's a different way from me struggling right now, giving what works right now. Back in the day, it was easier to get subscribers because there are not many YouTubers. But now, per day, almost, uh, almost 5 million videos are uploaded, I don't know, in a few minutes. So how one person will come to subscribe to your YouTube channel? For me, I can watch certain YouTube videos, certain channel, even for a month without even subscribing first. You have to be so it's a, a very, a very tough. So to be consistent takes time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's very good. I like your determination. You definitely gonna get to where you want to go. Yeah. So that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, yeah, you're committed, you know, and that's the thing. I was say for employment, you really have to. Commit yourself and be willing to work more, you know, than you would when you're when you're hired. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So I think we don't have any other question from anyone here. Uh, I want to remind the people who are watching to go to your website, which is Habari uh, Academy .com, or to go to your Facebook, Facebook.com Habari Academy. Or to check on your uh, on your phone, that is the number plus one, which is the US code, uh, and they can be able to get from there. Okay, thanks a lot. Thing to say to people before we end the live session. 
So thanks a lot for everybody who tuned in and able to listen. I hope you have gained something because the goal was not just only to market, but also to educate, to inform, you know, just like the way Mr. Makalilo, you're so much into it, it's informing people, you know, like helping people, you know, give people information that helps them, like how to come to America and things like that. So, all right. So uh, oh, one thing, I, I mean, Mr. Makalilo has a lot to offer. So you are welcome to tune in to... <laughs> into his YouTube and subscribe to get more information. But also, you know, if you need to more about Swahili, Bari Academy, also I'm, I'm so much into looking for, you know, teachers, even if you're other part of the world, maybe in Kenya, Tanzania, you know, you speak Swahili and you, you're a teacher, you have experience. Yeah, yes, I'm willing to, you know, work out with you so you can send me a message and we can go from there. Yeah, so because you're looking to expand, as I say, the academy is just one year old only it's about to be one year old so there's a lot of growth there's a lot of knowledge that need to go into it a lot of creativity so i'm i welcome if you have any ideas anything you can just you know the number you see over there is my number so you can reach out or you can send a message when you go to a barry academy you can send me a message at any time and i'll be able to get it yeah and thanks a lot and mr makoyo thanks a lot for giving me an opportunity and I'm looking forward to come back. Maybe not for Swahili. It could be for yeah. something else because I enjoy the conversation. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot.